so welcome afternoon and I will be uh, my name is Mikolaj Falisz and I will present the twist test bed that's located in, in Berlin and we will I will talk in this uh, in today I will talk about just the twist test bed what's how to, to work with that how to how to install and I show based on the, some spectrum sensing demonstration how it works and tomorrow we can uh, go a bit deeper so showing more advanced functionalities of twist what we added recently uh, that is like parallel to, to twist but adding the interference generation and more cognitive components also mobility support and so on that will be covered tomorrow uh, so first I would like to start with some motivation, why we just bothered to implement Twist and what's, uh, 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 what's going on, uh, why we did that, then I will go to, to the Twist itself, how it's the structure, oh hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, the mobility still support. <laughs> mobility support, okay. <laughs> Yeah, the size more or less matches. And yeah, I will finish with the demonstration and some, some tutorial how to, to use the, uh, the uh, test bed. Uh, so the motivate. So we escaped the wheelchair. Okay. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I, I met him was. Okay. <laughs> so the main motivation of the uh, twist test bed was that uh, sensor network, like uh, the development of the sensor network application. Yeah, you at the beginning you can work with simulations, emulations and so on, but at some point of time it's really good to test uh, the, the, the communication protocols in real life and with a real environment <coughs> and uh, it's not so, uh, it uh, has to be some, some real hardware, some realistic environment and, and experimental setup to, to test it. And uh, although it's pretty easy to, to start with a couple of nodes on your desk and so on, a large scale uh, test bit where you have uh, multiple nodes and not all, uh, all are connected with each other, it starts to be difficult and starts to be big effort. So that's why we have uh, made an attempt already a couple of uh, six, over six years ago to uh, to build the large scale sensor network test bed with dedicated out of band control signaling in a realistic setting. So that's the whole baseline, what, what we actually wanted to achieve and in my opinion the goal was achieved and uh, it's already the, the whole development, it's, it's pretty stable, it works for, for uh, as mentioned a couple of years and there is hardly any sensor network conference that uh, haven't uh, the, the papers from the conference didn't use the, the data collected in Twist so it's very famous and not only TUB or crew people are using that but it's a uh, well-known test bed for, for, uh, for sensor network experiments and it's, it's used worldwide basically and uh, uh, mm, and yeah, it's, it's said that it's one of the biggest uh, indoor sensor networks in the world, actually. So Twist, how it looks like. So that, that's the, the, the main architecture of Twist. At the bottom, we have the uh, sensor nodes. I will come to, to that uh, a bit earlier. They are all connected over passive and active uh, USB cables to USB hub. And this is connected to the super node that's controlling the, the all functions like installing the node, controlling the power supply. So we put the USB 2 features. It's possible to disable one port, the power of one port uh, on the on the USB, so that's simulating the uh, net, net, uh, node failures, which is probable in the sensor networks. 
and uh, you can uh, on demand switch and uh, switch on and off each of the nodes in the testbed. And also, Supernodes provides the the, uh, the, the internet backbone that uh, you can from outside from the control station you can actually have the direct connection to each of the se uh, the sensor nodes. You can uh, lock uh, whatever you want over the serial connection, and it doesn't require you to use wireless for for your debug information. Wireless is meant for like your experiment is going wirelessly, and if you would like to block something, just use the the cable, and you will have all the information you need. And you can also interface through the cable. So, uh, so if you would like to send some comments to the sensor node, it's also possible. It's also it's like working. In the end, you are working with the each the whole test bed. Like if it, it will, all the nodes would be connected to your own machine, and you can uh, use standard tiny US messages uh, uh, to to interface to that. So yeah, I haven't mentioned that the nodes are currently using support without any problems tiny US. And if you would like to use, for example, Contiki, it still will work, but with some some limited features. So basically, you can imp, uh, upload your own binary to the to the each node, and we don't check what is in that binary. If you use TinyIS, we can change the node ID to node ID of our testbed, so you have the, the support of that then, and it's providing you the, the addressing automatically, or you can select the, the right channel to to work on or something like that during the program uh, programming, but you don't have to use that. So that's the, the different uh, view of the architecture. We, have, we support currently two types of nodes. So one is ISIFX, uh, which works in sub gigahertz ISM band, and uh, Timo Skies, that is probably best known uh, platform for sensor, uh, sensor networks. Uh, here it's also. <laughs> uh, used and uh, yeah, as said, they are connected by USB hubs to the super node. We have couple. Uh, we have private server for for management. We have public server for uh, uh, HTTP uh, access and re uh, reprogramming. And actually, everything can be done remotely. And that's how we all work. That we j you just. Uh, connect every do everything remotely, and you don't have to. It doesn't matter when you where you sit, and still work. So basic features. Also, all the features of the of the current release is that we have, we support network wide reprogramming, so we can reprogram each node with the same image, the same node with different each node with different images. You can configure per uh, per node everything. You you can uh, extract the debug information without interfering with your wireless channel. You can uh, we support heterogeneous platforms, and I will in the second also uh, um, say a bit more about that because we are in the process of upgrading the system. So ISIFX nodes are pretty old, and they, they are rarely used by our users. And we are in the process of changing them to some, some newer platforms. I will come to that. As I don't also remember the, the whole, whole things, I have to, to look what we are going to, to change. And we support the hierarchical networks, so you, it's up to you what you schedule, how uh, you uh, configure your nodes. One can be the, the coordinator that you connect to, and the, the rest of them is uh, our slaves. or. This is completely up to the user what he configures on the on the sensor node, and to some limited point, we are also supporting adding new features to the super node. That if you would like to to implement something more, but actually you don't have to. I'm I will also so show in like demo that we are using a, a bit more advanced capabilities where the part of the code is running on my PC, and the rest, rest is running on the super node, and I'm just connecting the, uh, with this out of band connection to, to the node and, and using that. And uh, yeah, I haven't mentioned, I have already mentioned the active power control, so you can select the node and turn it off. 
and everything is built on, on open standards, open architectures, and everything is open source. So you can actually download the code and build your own twist instance and your own perimeters. And this actually has been done by Siemens in their own uh, facility. They, with our help, they installed their own twist instance for their own experiments. So that's also possible if you would like to do that. Uh, we support that. And that's also the second proof that uh, the twist is, is pretty well developed. Uh, going to the bit more details, uh, it's the whole uh, test that spans over three floors of our office building. So that's the normal office environment that people are constantly working in. I have notes on top of my head when I work at my desk. So uh, that's. Uh, you have to, if you would like to experiment, you have to account that, okay, there will be pop, uh, people there, they, they will open and close the doors, so the propagation will change, and you cannot count on that. So that's even more real uh, than putting this uh, in some, some environment where nobody's there and nobody's working. Uh, and everything is pretty static. So at some point you can figure it out what is the link quality between each node, and everything is fixed. And in this, uh, in our case, it's not uh, not true because when you open the doors, the, uh, the connectivity changes and uh, and we uh, currently have around 200, uh, 204 nodes. Half of it is the mode sky uh, that will stay, and half of that is ISI fix that we will change uh, in your future. And to control all of that, we have. Uh, 46 super nodes, over uh, 60 USB hubs, and over one kilometer of uh, USB cabling to, to connect all of that. So it was quite a work to, to build it on. And it's this building that's the, the picture of our campus, and that's how the, the node positions look like. So the uh, blue nodes, I believe, are Timoid skies and the, the red ones IIS, IFX and uh, we see that it's pretty regular grade on, on that and that's example of one floor that's the second floor and we more or less the same is on the on of all floors so that's pretty regular grade but still while opening and closing the doors the, the connectivity changes and we were we had a the, the, uh, couple still two years ago we had big uh, metal cupboards here with all the with all the documentation in the uh, on the floor here uh, in the corridor and it's actually meant for our test but that it was easier for the nodes to communicate vertically than to go over the corridor so it's not so true anymore but it's still sometimes you see the tendons uh, of the test but but it's uh, it's a bit relaxed now. Uh, you can find more information in the in the paper that it's well cited over two thousand uh, over thousand citations or I counted citations I don't remember exactly, but it's a lot. Uh, or the twist website where you have all the uh, in information about the the whole infrastructure. Uh, the instance and also the link to how to log in and all the tutorials are all there or on the, on the crew portal, which you probably know. Now the, what we will change, we will uh, leave the T-mode skies and replace all of IF, uh, ISIFX nodes with mixture of these three platforms. So around six, uh, we'll get from Texas Instruments around 60 ARM Cortex M4 with low power wireless LAN devices, uh, some sub gigahertz uh, nodes and Bluetooth low energy. And we will install this in the mixture, mixture and uh, instead of IS, IFX nodes. And that will, the time span is around the first or second quarter of this year, so we are waiting when Texas Instruments is able to provide us all, all, all our the, the new nodes and of course installment, which is also needs some some work. 
And we also will uh, replace the current super nodes with bigger and more complex because the old uh, super the, the super nodes that we currently have are pretty old and they are limited in their resources and we actually don't have any more spurs so during the demo we'll see that two of them are currently non-functioning and we can't replace them because there is none of the market to be able to be bought. So that's why all, that was also mainly reason to, to do the, the major upgrade because we are out of spare parts for the twist and we have to replace that. Going more to the demonstration now. Uh, again, that's the our uh, that's the uh, campus. Uh, we will be uh, we are located here, and that's the picture from outside of the of the building. So we have the, the a bit better view of how it looks like, and that's the the floor plan that I was uh, mentioning. So top three floors is our uh, are uh, from the people from our group. And all, all on all of them, there are installed the, the nodes, and you are able to experiment that with that. And also, we can see that okay, here I'm using one uh, the team mode skies for for my experiment. I have some visualiz visualization for that. I will come to it later. And that's how actually it will, uh, it looks like when it is installed. So uh, on the on the ceiling we have the ISI fix node and uh, T-Mode Sky uh, glued to to the ceiling, and over the uh, USB cable here to the uh, uh, super node located uh, in the corner, and that's repeated in the smaller room, uh, smaller room also in the different location and everything goes uh, usually to the corner of the room to the super node and then backbone ethernet to the, to the server and in the bigger rooms we have like usually two super nodes uh, that are working uh, in, in the room to, to provide all the, the same setups so i will be uh, in the in this demonstration, I will be talking about this spectrum sensing application. So going more in the direction of the uh, um, cognitive radio, uh, we have developed the application that scans over all 15.4 channels and logs the the file to the database. And I will also install one sensor node as the jammer node, and we will be able to to show you how you can interface to that, you can over SSH, uh, we will uh, be able to change the channel which is working with the spectrum, spe the spectrum sensing application, you will see that there, there is real change in the, in the environment. Uh, yeah, so there I will try to cover all the functionalities that you will have in, in Twist. So that's how it looks like. So the uh, the resulting the result will hopefully look like that, where we have the, the uh, image of the of the whole floor. We have uh, node positions, so we know where they are, and we are uh, able to to show the the power uh, on the selected channel, and it will hopefully change on the real time that you will see in this uh, this working currently. Uh, implementation is all looking like this. So we have the uh, that's taken from the uh, uh, connectivity brokerage framework that I'm de developing as part of my PhD. Uh, but the, the main idea is that we have the, the spectrum, the twist nodes are doing uh, working as the spectrum sensing, so discovery. Uh, a feature of the connectivity brokerage transmitting the uh, uh, the data to the uh, um, node C connectivity agent that will run on my PC and this will uh, transmit the, the whole data to, to, to central controller that will dump everything to the database. We actually will be grabbing the data from the, from the database and showing it over the uh, web interface. So let's go to, to work. You have to, to start working, you have to accept our terms of use. Uh, that's not much for, uh, actually you can go, go into that. Uh, 
and yeah, uh, we uh, to to grant access to twist, you will have to to accept a couple of rules that uh, we have to describe more or less what we are doing, so we can disclose any privacy issues, because some of our colleagues are uh, actually concerned about the light sensor in the. Uh, on the T-Mode Sky node that can actually, if you have the, the light information, you can actually predict when the guy is working or not, and you can start social sciences on top of that, which a lot of people in Germany don't like, <laughs> and that's why you, uh, you have to describe this a bit, uh, what you are doing, or don't use the light sensor at all, so... Of course, we don't check it. It's on the gentleman's agreement, but uh, still, it would be nice that you don't use it for social scientists, but communication protocols development. <laughs> but I hope that you are all here on the communications development, not social sciences. So I think it's, it should be fine. And uh, we try to, if you have some test bed, we would, if you uh, agree to that, we, uh, if you have some test bed that you offer, we would like to, to be able to use it also as the, the agreement that if you use ours, then probably you should be able to use yours. And if you publish some, some data based on twist test bed, just acknowledge that it was done in our test bed. I think that's fair. At least that send uh, the, uh, uh, the email to uh, to the admin at Twist, and you should get uh, the account pretty soon. And it's it's well known, and a lot of people is using that, so that shouldn't be a big big issue. Uh, okay, so now you have to to reserve. If you have already your your account, you have to uh, reserve a job, and we will just go. Oh, uh, that's the... Great. You have to, to log in into the Twist uh, web interface. Uh, let me just check what was the password for the crew demonstration that will be working for next day, 10 days until the end of the week. I, uh, it's reserved the, the job. So we can actually, uh, with this login and uh, uh, the password, should I make it bigger? And the password that I can give you, uh, will you can experiment with that uh, to the end of the week. So if I sign in. Uh, okay, that's the information about the user. And we go to the jobs. And here is our job that is currently running. It's also disclosed as different color, by the way, and it will go till the end of the week, till 2200 uh, hours. And you can actually add new job and select your which platform you would like to use and select the time frame. So it, you cannot, uh, it will, after trying to add some, some description to what you are doing, uh, and you can add the job, it will throw an error if there is some, some other job already registered for that time. So you cannot uh, mess with the uh, with other jobs currently currently running. But if you register, you have exclusive rights to, to access the whole test, but for the, uh, the platforms you have selected. So you can do everything on top of that and nobody will interfere with you. Uh, so, yeah, what we have next? Uh, next, we have to install the custom sensor node image. Uh, so, let's do that. Uh, I select the job. I select I would like to control it. And I have actually the, uh, the list of the all nodes that are in the testbed. So, I can either copy and paste it to the to the node list if I would like to install the same sensor application I select the, the binary file and the serial forwarding that's from tinyas the baud rate that I would like to use and actually you can uh, hit install and it will, it will install the, uh, the same image on all the nodes 
But for the, the demonstration, I would like to have the, the jammer node on the node 209. So I will remove it from here and add it on the second uh, place and we'll uh, select the Uh, the Java application. And I will select the bandwidth and I would like to select that it will work on channel 12. And I hit install and we'll in parallel distribute the, set, the, the images that are required to the all super nodes and we'll, hit, uh, and we'll issue the install command on all, all, on all selected <coughs> nodes. So it will it's pretty fast uh, because it, it goes in parallel to all super nodes, not after each other. So the the, uh, the installation of the uh, of the nodes is pretty fast. It's kind it's kind of slow now because there are a couple of super nodes that are failing, and we have to wait till their time out, and we cannot install on, on them uh, unfortunately. But yeah, that's how it works. We have to, to wait for, for that. In the meantime, uh, so we selected the Jammer application, the spectrum sensing on all other nodes, and we now are able to start our visualization. So let's wait first for uh, to know that everything is started correctly. And in the meantime, I can start to prepare the. The right visualization. Okay, so I have everything in in one script for uh, for my own uh, business. But uh, what I will do actually will be uh, a bit <coughs> that's visible I suppose uh, yeah. so, yeah. so what I will do I will start actually the SSH connection to all selected nodes to have the, the direct connection to all of the nodes because I, as I said earlier we will have the, the information to my PC from the nodes, so we don't cover the uh, uh, the wireless, but to, to collect over the SSH, and I will be uh, starting uh, uh, here in the for loop for all the selected nodes. I will start my uh, my application to collect the data. And also one application to uh, to dump the data, the collected data into the database, and uh, run the visualization web server. And we will be able to see that over the uh, over the web server how it works. Still not finished. It really takes a lot of time. Are there any questions to that right now? Because yeah. <laughs> okay, now it's in it, now it's finished. So we have the, the log uh, from all the uh, installations from all the, uh, the super nodes, and at the end we will see uh, that uh, some work failed. So that's what because of the failing super nodes, and we see the list of the nodes that failed. So if there is an error, you can uh, you can see what's going on. And usually, it's yeah that's currently pretty standard because super nodes are unfortunately not working. But if you have any problems, just copy paste everything and send it to us. Then we'll uh, be able to debug it and uh, see what's what's the problem. And you have here the, the reminder all the time how to set up the, uh, the SSH connection to the node. It works like that, that you have the node number and you add the, if necessary, zero and uh, uh, 
port uh, and you add nine to the port number and you can uh, uh, set up the SSH port forwarding to your local host at the same port as the source port. So that means that my uh, local host port uh, 9010 will be connected to the node 10 directly. And I can use the ser standard serial to forward of TinyOS to, to connect to that port and we'll have the direct connection to the, uh, to the node. So let's uh, start everything. So I'm setting up the one as SSH for, for all the nodes, the second one for uh, uh, for the jammer, and in the second we'll probably So you can do this manually, but it's easier to have the script to start everything. Uh, I'm st starting all the uh, C agents for the nodes and it should be working, so let's see. Yes. So we can see that we selected channel 11 and we see that on uh, the power level around minus 100, I believe. It's pretty small, sorry for that. Uh, uh, DBMs uh, reported and you see that it's changing so every second I should get an update of uh, uh, of the channel measurements from all the nodes and uh, by the color we see what is the, uh, the output of that and unfortunately due to some construction works the, uh, those nodes has to be dismounted from the ceiling and they are <coughs> not connected yet unfortunately and I lost connection. And also here we should have the <coughs> installed the, the chamber node. So that's that's why I selected uh, node 209, and I will I will try to, to connect to that directly and. Uh, and control it via, via SSH and the standard uh, ROS messages. Okay, so we installed the jammer on node, uh, on, we selected the channel to work on channel 12, so we see that the, the name boring node immediately show much higher output than the, the nodes farther away switch back, it's everything is more or less blue to green and on channel 12 here is a lot of red. And now just... Uh, here I have the... Uh, I can. I wrote some small Python tool to for for my convenience, but I, uh, but uh, it's uh, I can select the channel, select the, the output power from the available from CC twenty two twenty two forty, and select where I should connect. So the local uh, usual serial flow order when started will run on on this IP and, and port, but I'm connecting to to the custom one, so I have to, to specify that. And select that I would like to use channel 11 and a bit lower power, so minus 10 dBm. And I'm connecting to, the, uh, to this uh, socket and setting both parameters. And we see that on the channel 12 is uh, not much traffic anymore, but on the channel 11, it's it's there. 
and if I move to my second screen, I can show you that if I increase the power, it should be pretty immediate. So I have direct connection, and I uh, I can work with that. Okay, so. Are there any questions to, to how it works and uh, what you can do that? I haven't covered yet the node failures, so what happens if you turn off the, the power of the node? Uh, I, can, I can do that in a second, but uh, first, if there are any questions, that's okay. <coughs> uh, so, I can either go back to the uh, web interface and go back to my my to controlling my job and select which 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 one would be suitable for example two to eight two to eight and uh, down here I can power it on power it off start or stop serial forwarder on them and also start or stop tracing. These two buttons mean that uh, if I start tracing, everything that comes all over the uh, serial forwarder with the standard pr printf library uh, will be locked on our server and you can uh, actually download the, the whole log afterwards. So you don't have to connect via SSH to collect your own traces, but you can, uh, you can use standard output start tracing on all of the nodes and after walls you will have the, the dump file with all the messages from all the nodes and you can parse that i believe there are also timestamps there so you know what, what happens and you have no ladies so everything will uh, should be should be there but let me Unfortunately, this will also take uh, pretty long, but in the meantime, I can uh, also uh, I'll show you that you can, uh, via curl, you can uh, uh, also access the whole of the all nodes with the command line interface. So that's the everything is actually implemented over the standard uh, HTTP. Uh, get and post requests, so we can control all the uh, all twists via HTTP post requests. So that's also pretty convenient if you would like to to make scripts or, or more dynam dynamically control which nodes are powered down or powered on. You have all the, the instructions. They are also online uh, here to uh, out first out.